Hey guys, Scott here. Yes, I did. And also my light bulb just went out. Uh, today, we're going to go over the future changes coming to Dead by Daylight. They're reviewing their year seven roadmap and they're adding a bit more to it for what to expect for year eight. Now, their years start in June because that's when the game actually came out. Um, so that's why it starts in June. Uh, but I want to go over what they're going to be adding and um, what they've done up until this point. Um, but really, it's mostly going to be about what they're adding because, I mean, we've already seen what they've done up until this point. So um, let's go over to the actual first real changes that they're starting to make. Uh, first off, the whole blood web improvements. It sounds like they have heard the complaints of it taking way too long to actually spend blood points. It is pretty funny that we actually have too many blood points to spend now and we can't spend them fast enough, but that is legitimately a problem with the game now. And that's a good problem to have, I would have to say, but it is definitely an actual issue. I have 4 million blood points saved up and I, I just don't want to spend them. It takes too long. So I would very much like to see what they're going to do to enhance the spending speed. Because by now, I could have had prestige 100 characters. I just I don't want to spend blood points for 18 hours to do that. So um, it's good that they're finally working on this. And uh, I'm curious to see exactly what that will entail. Uh, next, apparently, this is shocking to me. There are 70,000 bot matches played per day. I did not expect that to be that high. I did expect there's going to be a lot of new players using the bot feature to learn the game. I didn't expect it would be 70,000 bot matches a day. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean 70,000 people are doing that because, you know, people can do multiple bot matches in a day if they want to practice something, they want to test one little thing, they want to test one little perk really quick. Um, so it's not like they're playing full matches, but still, that is an insane amount. I did not realize that that system was getting utilized that much, um, but that is pretty interesting. It seems like they just want to further expand upon the bot system, which... In the future, it might finally give us a replacement for disconnected players where we get a uh, bot that actually can mimic, you know, decent level skill. And I think that is probably the best solution for disconnects that, or that we could possibly have. So I would uh, love to see that. And it seems to be that's where they're going to be going for it. So I would not be surprised if within the next year we see them uh, replace disconnected players with the bots that they've been working on for quite some time. Now, they do admit that some perks, you know, they can't just do. It's just too complicated for a bot to do, and I completely understand that. But sometimes just a basic bot that can hold forward, run to a generator, and just do the generator is sometimes all you need to mitigate heavy losses from a disconnect. So I think that is honestly great. Obviously, if the guy disconnects on death hook, it won't matter because then the bot will immediately die. So it's sort of a foolproof thing, and there's no reason to not have that. Uh, next is the whole map repeat prevention system. So what they're trying to do here is make it so you cannot get the same map twice in a row. Um, and I think that's a cool thing to have. I'm a little worried what that'll do to queue times, though, because if everyone in a lobby has to make sure and mix and match and make sure that none of them have encountered the same map twice, that might make queue times actually worse. So I'm a little hesitant about this one. I don't really mind getting the same map two or three times in a row. What I do mind is getting the same killer two or three times in a row. If anything, I would have loved to have seen uh, killer repeat pre uh, prevention. So, you know, if you've gone against the knight and then your next game's a knight and then your next game is a knight, you don't really want that fourth game to be the knight because now you're just bored. I don't care if it's on the same map as long as we have different killers. The maps being changed is far less important than the gameplay of the killer you're going against. So I would love to see this change to killer repeat prevention. I don't think they can do both because now we just have too many limiting factors to actually having a successful match being made and queue times might suffer for it. So I would like to see this be killer uh, repeat prevention, not map repeat prevention. Um, obviously, map offerings are not going to affect this because then you can just guarantee to go to that map. Um, so it's an interesting thing that they're thinking about that, though, because it can be annoying getting the same map over and over again. Uh, I just think their priority should be with having the same killer over and over again because that is more annoying, at least in my opinion. Um, they're working on a visual tear radius. I'm guessing this is going to be something similar to what mobile has. If you've never seen mobile, there's basically a, uh, a heartbeat symbol that is locked inside the survivors and it kind of grows based on the terror radius of the killer because it can be kind of hard to hear on a phone game. Um, and I think that's probably what they're going to be working on. I don't see why they wouldn't just copy what the mobile team has already done. It's pretty effective. It doesn't give you an inherent advantage or anything like that. Um, so I think it's just a pretty much a no-brainer to just copy what mobile already has. That's probably what we're going to be seeing in the future. Uh, next, it seems like they're going to be addressing, uh, this is Crotus Prent Asylum, by the way. This is the entrance to the building, which is pretty problematic. I hope it's more than just a visual update. It seems like Asylum is going to be the next map that's being worked on. And, uh, that map is one of the worst killer maps in the game. It has always been for almost seven years now. Um, it has an insanely strong main building that can be accessed basically anywhere in the entire map. 
So you can get hit from any of the corners, run to the main building, then you're safe because there's four god pallets, two god windows in there. And that can be uh, just impossible to deal with this killer to the point where you basically have to play away from the building or have some form of one shot to really compete. Additionally, it is one of the biggest maps in the game. I think it's like second or third biggest in the entire game. It is a massive map, way, way too big. Um, we need to see more changes like what they're doing with Eerie of Crows, where they kind of chop the map down a little bit. Um, this map, Cardus Friend Asylum, is way too big. So uh, if they make the map smaller and make the god building in the middle not quite as ridiculous, I think we'll have a lot more of a balanced time on that map. Because, yeah, that map is absolutely horrendous as killer if you don't have a one shot because then everyone's just going to get to the main building and you're just you just can't win chases in that building it's too rough so i would love to see it be more than just a visual update typically when they say they're doing a visual update they do mean they're changing palette placements and things like that too so i think we're going to get more than just a visual update there uh which would be good uh next they're going to be working on some more perks they haven't really addressed what they're working on probably more of a meta shakeup thing which is great they are looking at eruption which is extremely important because i think that is pretty much unanimously agreed to be a bit too strong for solo queue. Um, a lot of good suggestions have flown around. Whatever one they go with, I'm sure, will be better than what we currently have. Um, but yeah, Eruption has been uh, a pretty meta-dominating perk for, for the entire time that it's been buffed, uh, so much so that killers that really should not be winning can very easily win with a certain setup, and I feel like that's not quite the case. Every time I say that, people just go, What about that hard? Um, yes, that's also annoying. There can be annoying things on both sides. That's how that's how balance works. You don't have to every time you do this, you don't have to take something away from this. You do it, you know, piecemeal, and that's how the behavior devs do it. Um, I have no doubt we'll see changes to that at some point too. So, um, yes, I do think eruption needs to be nerfed, not destroyed. It just needs to maybe not incapacitate for forty-seven years, and it'll be fine. Um, finally, there's this whole part about limited time cosmetics. I'm gonna take a pretty whatever ambivalent stance on this. I've never seen the drama in this where they have, you know, it's called Fear Missing Out. They have limited time cosmetics, so you have to buy them now. Uh, if you don't, then they're just gone. Um, so what they're doing is you can get them basically a year later now. Um, but I, I've never even found the original version of this to be like as predatory as people say. It's just cosmetics. If you don't want them, just don't fucking buy them. Like, I don't know. That That's always been my mindset about it. I, people like are, you know pitchforks out with behavior i do understand where they're coming from it is basically incentivizing you hey kid buy it now it's going to be gone soon i get the whole tactic but at the same time it's hey kid buy this sticker I'm like i don't need the sticker okay and then i just keep walking so i don't care about this i'm just going to leave it at that i don't care about this um but that is pretty much it i think a lot of these changes are honestly great i would love to see the specifics of all these but that's pretty much what's coming uh within the next I don't even know if it's going to be in the next year because they specifically worded this to be the seven uh, year seven roadmap editions, which means it's still going to be on year seven. So it seems like these things will be coming pretty soon within the next few months before we get to the year eight roadmap, which will again start in June. So it seems like uh, these things will be coming soon, and that's great to hear. Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See ya.